we're at Hewlett Packard headquarters today in Cupertino, California, and uh, we have a bunch of developers who are hacking away developing code to come up with applications that will produce programs that are going to be extremely helpful for the autism communities. I believe the brainchild of Hacking Autism uh, started within Hewlett Packard and the leadership there who wanted to make a difference in the autism community felt that they were in a unique position to um, bring together people like developers of applications and to come up with products that would be able to be of benefit for this community. My name is Phil McKinney. I'm the Vice President and Chief Technology Officer for Hewlett Packard's Personal Systems Group. Sounds important. <laughs> <laughs> Hacking Autism came to be roughly a little bit more than two years ago. Um, started off in a program inside of HP where we were looking at causes that we could rally around. Uh, previously to that, my daughter obviously had got me involved in autism because of her uh, work in that space as a speech language pathologist. So I volunteered autism as being one of the causes that HP should focus in on. It ended up becoming a rallying cry inside of HP amongst the employees. And so we went ahead and formed uh, it created uh, hackingautism.org as a site to allow for us to aggregate up technologies that parents could take advantage of. Hacking Autism is an organization and a, and a site that we've created to basically bring together the experts in the autism community, people on the spectrum themselves, and the technology community to bring together and create applications. These are applications that the community specifically needs. I mean, there's lots of applications that are available on all kinds of mobile devices that the autism community has embraced. These are applications that the autism community wishes existed, but don't exist today. And so we've you know, leveraged our contacts and networks and just the, the, the technical community as a whole to come together and, and partner with uh, the specialists in autism and create these applications. I'm gonna ask uh, uh, Jim St. Ledger from Intel to come up. Jim is actually one of the first guys who contacted me when we first announced the hacking autism. Jim's at uh, Intel. Uh, he's based in Arizona, has a son on, uh, on the spectrum. I think brings a unique perspective of technology and parenting uh, with, uh, with, with children with autism. So, I got exposed to hacking autism back in May of this year. And when I stumbled upon something called hacking autism, I was very intrigued. I work for Intel in the technology field. Um, it's one of my passions. I think, you know, like Phil, anybody who's in this space usually really enjoys it and tries to figure out what are the latest developments and things you can do with them. Having the sun on the spectrum, um, made it doubly intriguing for me. So I found out more about it and when they started talking about how to use touch sensitive technology with sort of the app concept to marry them together to benefit these children, I, I was sold to participate, help out in any way I could. One of the things I joked with my wife yesterday, which is hopefully out of today can come the angry birds for autism. From <laughs> <apps perspective. laughs> Everybody knows how pervasive that is, right? Um, there isn't a child, I think, who doesn't know how to play it and you just put it in front of them, they figure it out very quickly. You know, these kind of apps you guys are going to develop have the potential to be that changing to these kids. And it won't be one that solves it for everybody, but it will be a portfolio of solutions that can really help people working with autistic kids from the community, the mental health community and providers, to teachers and of course to parents like myself. My name is Pamela Sloan Bradbury and um, I'm from Extra Special Kids, which is a company that makes apps for children on the spectrum. Somebody from HP contacted us and wanted to include our app, Sandy Born to Run, in their software, Hacking Autism, and uh, we signed up for the developers program. I never heard about autism before, and uh, it, it was uh, all new information for me. You know, there's, there's this need, there's a great cause. Um, I was just here as a developer trying to help. Well, there's a lot of smart people who are experts in different fields who are here today. So my name is Will Pate. I'm from an organization called Random Hacks of Kindness. Uh, my name is Andy Scher. I'm the Vice President of Scientific Affairs at Autism Speaks. I'm the Director of the May Center for Child Development in West Springfield, Mass. It's really hard to put a team like that together in one place. Uh, we all learn from each other. We brought different skill sets uh, into play. We developed these apps. And I think that was, uh, that's something really unique. The skill that I brought to the team that I worked with is I spend my days working on user experience and design for the healthcare space, for the enterprise world. And I thought I could take a day off and actually work on applications that are meant for children, children who have um, autistic uh, conditions and um, be able to apply my skill that way. 
I have some close family friends who have children that are diagnosed with autism and so for me it was like one personal reason to do it but I also came and joined uh, this cause because I, there's just so much potential with what you can do with technology. There are a number of people that have come with um, with company representation and they brought programmers, um, you know, uh, user interface people, QA people, programmers. Um, that's fantastic. And then others um, that were, you were individually volunteered, we actually formed teams. And we just got lumped into this group, never having met before, but all having the same goal to produce a really excellent app for someone and, and to help someone on the spectrum. The second we got together, we started brainstorming. Literally, like the second our team got together in the room and we were told we were team number eight, we started brainstorming. Somehow, we were a team where all of our skills complemented each other. And, and because of that, I believe we were able to come up with something really good and complete something really quickly. Well, one of the special moments during the event was when Skylar, one of the kids who has, um, who's uh, on the spectrum of autism, came by and actually gave us feedback on our app. And so it was exciting to see him get excited about what we we're doing, but also give his honest perspective on it. I'm on the board of advisors, so I can, so I try and help people and help them figure out like which things on your app are good, which things could be misleading. We got to build an app that would help parents tell their children social stories. So we put together this app that let a parent pull from a set of pictures, and you could take these pictures and drag them in a certain order and add captions and actually save them. And so you could use this for your child when you're changing situations. One thing I learned here is that when you have an autistic child, when you change situations from going home to going to a restaurant to going to a birthday party, there's a lot of things that you need to do to help prime them. And so our app was designed to help with that. Tablets are extremely important because they don't have a keyboard. Um, when you're dealing with this huge touch screen, uh, the whole entire surface is a canvas for a child to explore, for a child to interact with. They don't have to learn what each of these different keys do. They just look at these buttons, symbols, sounds, pictures, and just interact with them. What I'm really intrigued myself about touch technology is just watching my son and some other of his uh, Spectrum peers that he hangs out with engage it. You hand them a tablet, you know, those kids on the high end of the spectrum, they immediately know what to do and they just start playing around with it. Now the question is, how can you make apps that enable these kids to learn, uh, become more socially aware, and just become a benefit for them as they try to navigate their way through their childhood development and into life and hopefully being valued contributors to society. Hacking Autism taught me that there's so much opportunity in this space, especially building these kinds of apps for children, and especially for educators who teach these children. Uh, there's a, just a whole world out there of possibilities. I, I think what's been happening in technology, uh, the technology world, is that uh, technology had moved out from um, uh, something that is static, uh, something that's large, to something that's much more mobile, something that's being integrated into daily life now. And that affords us an opportunity to use technology in ways that, that had not been imagined before. Your heart just breaks when you think about, as a parent, you know, what is that, you know, the changes that that invokes in, in, into your family. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I have a hard time, you know, when I get engaged with the autism community or I'm working on the Hacking Autism projects that, you know, you, you, my emotions, you know, just, you know, get caught up. I realize that the value of my work is not looking at something, some science that I'll say that's really cool and we need to do this and that. The value of my work is being able to take that science and trying to deliver solutions to the family. The face of autism is changing. It is no longer just considered to be a childhood disorder um, and we're starting to see obviously the impact of adults and we have this wave of children that are going to become adults over the next decade. We estimate that it's about a half a million, 500,000 individuals with autism will become adults in the next 10 years. And our mission really has to do with changing the future uh, for those that are living with autism. And we do it in these different, uh, four different areas. There's science, where Andy is, family services. There's no question in my mind that technology has had a profound influence on our community, and even in the last three to five years. Uh, it can, has the potential to improve the core symptoms. It leads to greater independence. And it also, very co uh, concretely, can help create employment opportunities. We need to bring the same kind of rigor, scientific rigor, to the development and assessment of technology as we do with drug development, as we do with uh, developing new behavior intervention. Because of programs like this, it really gives our families that sense of hope that you believe in our kids, that you're 
wanting to make a meaningful difference in their lives and uh, I have no doubt that things will be made today um, that will actually uh, make a significant difference in the lives of our community. So thank you so much.